Welcome listeners to today's episode of Furniture Industry News. It's August 30th, 2024, and we have an array of intriguing updates to discuss. From Labor Day sales optimism to the potential impact of Fed rate cuts on the furniture industry, we've got plenty to cover. Let's dive right in. Labor Day weekend is one of the most significant events on the furniture retail calendar. And this year, it's shaping up to be a pivotal moment for many in the industry. Despite 2024 being a challenging year, some top retailers like Grand Home Furnishings and Exclusive Furniture are pulling out all the stops to make the most of it. Grand Home Furnishings, based in Roanoke, Virginia, is banking on its new private label Grand Home Living upholstery line to draw in customers. They're offering interest-free financing and a variety of special deals, including a couple of freebies with select mattress purchases. Vice President of Marketing, Mike Virock, explained they're extending their reach this year, targeting new apartment complexes to boost sales. Exclusive Furniture in Houston is hoping its aggressive promotions, including no interest for 60 months, no money down, and no delivery fees, will pay off. According to Vice President of Sales, Fawad Zavari, They've combined this with a buy more, save more promotion, focusing particularly on bedding. Jonesboro's Gamble Home Furnishings is offering no sales tax and available 72-month financing. Strategies owner Chris Gamble believes will catch the attention of price-conscious consumers. They're focusing on sales for a shorter period to create a sense of urgency among shoppers. In Albuquerque, American Home Furniture and Mattress is differentiating its marketing approach between stores emphasizing unique product offerings and in-stock availability. Their promotions include premium bedding brands and significant outdoor furniture savings. Finally, Harkness Furniture and Mattress in Washington has rolled out a mix of TV, print, and digital promotions, featuring half-price delivery and a spin-the-wheel contest for various prizes. Owner Dave Harkness is cautiously optimistic, believing the industry is on the cusp of a turnaround. With all these strategic moves and special offers— Retailers are optimistic that Labor Day weekend will bring a boost in sales and potentially mark the beginning of a more prosperous period for the furniture industry. The Federal Open Market Committee is expected to cut interest rates by 25 basis points this September, marking the first drop since March 2020. However, furniture industry experts warn that significant benefits might not be felt until 2025. While some short-term gains could appear, notably in consumer confidence and minor upticks in sales, the bigger picture hinges on the housing market's recovery. Furniture sales are closely tied to housing starts, which have slowed down due to high interest rates. It's going to take a substantial drop over a full percentage point to revive the housing market, which in turn would boost furniture sales. So while the upcoming rate cuts are a positive sign, don't expect a big surge in furniture sales just yet. Factors like election season turbulence and cautious consumer behavior also play a role, suggesting that any major improvements are still a good 18 months away. Spot ocean container rates have dropped for the fifth consecutive week. Despite this decline, they are still more than three times higher than pre-pandemic levels. Currently, the average cost for a 40-foot container stands at $5,181, compared to the pre-pandemic average of $1,420. Rates for key routes, such as those from Shanghai to Los Angeles and New York, have also seen decreases. However, with the looming threat of port strikes on the East and Gulf coasts, the stability of these rates remains uncertain. As businesses navigate these fluctuating costs, long-term planning becomes increasingly challenging. High inventory levels are a major issue for many brick-and-mortar retailers, often leading to financial woes. Unlike traditional stores, e-commerce businesses have an edge with just-in-time delivery systems, which allow them to avoid the risks of excess inventory. This agile approach enables online retailers to respond quickly to market demands, keeping inventory costs low and increasing profitability. Brick-and-mortar stores can learn from their e-commerce counterparts by adopting similar practices. By integrating just-in-time delivery and reducing stock on hand, they can minimize the financial risks associated with unsold merchandise. Displaying a smaller curated selection of products rather than maintaining large inventories can also help. Moreover, fostering strong relationships with suppliers can ensure quicker restocks and more competitive pricing. By implementing these strategies, traditional retailers can improve their operational efficiency, better manage their resources, and stay competitive in an increasingly digital market. Big Lots may be filing for bankruptcy soon, raising significant concerns about its inventory and the future of the well-known Broyhill brand. 
Speculation suggests that this could bring big changes to the furniture industry. The company is seeking investors in a bid to avoid Chapter 11, but no plans are final yet. Big Lot's second quarter earnings, scheduled to be released on September 6th, could provide more insights into their financial health. The Broyhill brand, acquired by Big Lots in 2018, has helped drive sales across a range of categories, especially furniture, which represents the largest single category in their revenue. If Big Lots does move forward with a bankruptcy filing, the fate of Broyhill hangs in the balance. Some industry experts believe that even if Big Lots liquidates its assets, the Broyhill brand will likely find new ownership and continue in the marketplace. In any potential bankruptcy scenario, whether through reorganization or liquidation, the broader furniture market will certainly feel the ripple effects. The extensive recognition and consumer trust the Broyhill name commands means it's too important a brand to simply disappear. The next steps for Big Lots could very well shape the strategic decisions for other furniture retailers in the near future. Bernhardt Furniture is making a significant move by transitioning to a new showroom in High Point's design district. After over 40 years in their international home furnishing center space, the luxury brand is relocating to a 90 square foot building at 101 North Hamilton Street. This new location, set to open in April 2025, aims to better reflect Bernhardt's premium brand identity and aesthetic. The spacious two-story building features an open atrium and plenty of natural light, providing a perfect backdrop for their high-end furniture collections and allowing them to showcase their designs in a more inspiring environment. Thank you for tuning in to Furniture Industry News. If you enjoyed today's episode, please subscribe to our podcast to stay updated on all things furniture industry.